It seems like when it comes to The Last of Us Part 2, there are three groups of people. You got the people that like the game. I don't, I don't get why people don't like this game. It is a pure masterpiece, and they don't understand the high IQ intelligence of a story. They don't even understand what storytelling is. You got the people who hate the game. This game is the biggest SJW piece of trash, and they ruined the first game. They ruined Joel and Ellie, and, and if I ever see Neil Druckmann in the streets, he's gonna catch these nunchucks. And then you got the people like me, and probably most of you, people who are, you know, uh, saying, is The Last of Us Part 2 good, or is it kind of bad? Well, it's hard to answer that, because like all stories, it's subjective. There's not one set opinion. So in this video, I'll be trying to rationalize both the love and the hate for this game, and maybe help a person or two understand where the other side is coming from. Maybe I'll get some people to realize that it's okay to love the game, and if you hate the game, then that's fine too. Obviously, I need to give a spoiler warning because the plot needs to be discussed thoroughly, so turn back now if you haven't finished the game. So in order to rationalize the hate, we need to take a look at what people don't like about this game, and one of the biggest things that comes to mind is how they treated our boy Joel. So many players found themselves disappointed when it came to Joel's treatment, and how his death occurs pretty early into the game. Now if you're a fan of the game, you might say, oh well his death needed to happen, and, and this universe doesn't grant fantastical endings. That might be true from your point of view, but it doesn't mean that's true for everyone. Most people who played the original Last of Us fell in love with that dynamic of Joel and Ellie, and I'm definitely included in that camp. That being said, if you saw that dynamic and said, oh, there's gonna be a sequel, well, that's awesome, I wanna see that dynamic more. And then you play part two, you're gonna be disappointed. If that dynamic was a selling point for you, then you have a right to be a little bummed. Nobody has the right to tell you what you want and don't want from the game. You know what sucks? I, I really just wanted to see Joel and Ellie together more, you know? Well, actually, actually, that's not what the game's about. That's not what Ellie needs to grow as a character. Yeah, well, that's what I liked about the first game, and I'm just a little bummed, you know? Um, um, excuse me, excuse me, they have flashbacks? Yeah, but, like, I wanted Joel to be on the journey, you know, and have some growth because that's what they did in the first game. No, no, no you don't. That's not what you want. And if you didn't like the way Joel died, that's okay, that's how you felt. If you wanted Joel to go down like a badass, taking people down left and right, pop, 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 then that's what you wanted. And nobody can tell you not to want that. You shouldn't try to force yourself to be okay with something if you don't like it. I think that's one of the things this game does that divides a lot of people. It makes very risky choices that don't have a very concrete response. In the first game, when Joel saves Ellie at the end, I'm gonna assume that most people were happy because it meant Ellie was gonna live. It's a choice Naughty Dog made that pretty much got the same response all around. In this game though, it walks the line. It makes choices, and I feel like they didn't try to elicit any particular response at all. Happy or sad, it's all up to interpretation. Another thing that people don't like is Abby. And a few complaints I've heard is that she gets too much time and attention, and her design is weird, and that people don't like playing as her. Again, not everybody has to find Abby's portion of the game engaging. I'm sure that there's people that do, and I'm sure there's people that don't. If it doesn't interest you, then it doesn't interest you. I think a large portion of the hate this game gets is because of the interpretation of the risky choices Naughty Dog takes. Regardless of what you think of the game, I think this was a good thing. Naughty Dog is easily my favorite developer of all time, and one of the reasons they have always been at the forefront of the industry is because they innovate, and in order to innovate, you need to change things, you need to take risks. If you think the game's risks didn't pay off, then that's fine. There's plenty of other good games out there to play. I feel like there's people online though that are just so extreme about their opinion, they try to force it on everyone else. Both people who like the game and hate the game. If you hated the game, I'm sorry, I really am. Luckily, there's dozens of other games to play. We even got Ghost of Tsushima like a month after this. If you liked the game, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. But both sides need to just chill, okay? Engage in civil discourse if you want, but you have to acknowledge that different opinions are okay. But at the same time, everyone's feelings are valid, and I think the reason we get so many extreme opinions is because people connected with the first game so much. I do think there are some objective truths here in the game that both sides can agree on, and it's important to find some common ground. For example, we can all agree that the acting is phenomenal. Say what you will about Abby, but Laura Bailey is fantastic, and she's once again proven why she's my personal favorite working voice actress. And besides her though, everyone else is fantastic. And when a Troy Baker performance is like not even in my top three, you know the acting's good. 
Next up, we got an objective bad thing, and that's Mel. Okay, Mel sucks. I know she's probably supposed to suck. I just, I hate Mel. Also, the music is awesome. Gustavo kills it once again. And as far as set pieces go, the game has some awesome ones. From the car chase thing, to that sniper battle with Tommy, to the big fight on the island. There are some great moments. This kind of brings me to my next point, that people need to be okay giving points to the other side. If you're somebody who hates the game and you think it's like a zero out of 10, that's your opinion, but you have to have an open mind when discussing the game. The entire game was trash. Ellie, trash. Joel, trash. And, and, and you see these nunchucks right here? They got Neil Druckmann's name on it. Yeah, but isn't the museum scene pretty cool? All right, I gotta admit, that was pretty touching, man. When Joel gives her like the tape and he does that pretend launch thing, that was, uh, that was pretty sweet. I shed a tear. But I can't concede. They killed Joel. Everything trash. And the same goes for the other side. Best game of all time. The game is so good. I'm gonna name my first son Neil Druckmann. That's gonna be his his first name. Okay, his full name will be Neil Druckmann Abbey Rat King. That's how good the game was. Yeah, but don't you wish there was factions mode like in the first one? All right, factions mode was pretty sick, I gotta admit. But if I say that's true, then my whole opinion crumbles. Hmm, what would my first son Neil Druckmann Abbey Rat King say? Nope. You're wrong, best game of all time. I just think that all the opinions on this game are valid, and it's important to have an open mind when discussing it with somebody that disagrees. I'm not trying to force anybody to change their opinion or anything, but I think there's a reason this game is still being talked about almost a year after it came out. To me, a story is impactful when it leads to a conversation. When you live your life and you continue to think about it, months, days, or even hours, maybe in a bad way. I think The Last of Us 2 is a story that definitely has impacted the gaming world. Some will say for the good, some will say for bad. The reason why we have so much stake in Joel and why some people feel so robbed is because they loved him so much. They feel like he was somebody they knew and a lot of gamers did know Joel. His death might sting so bad because all deaths do and the worst ones are the ones that don't feel fulfilling. If Joel was a character we didn't care about so much, I'm sure his death wouldn't have been that big of a deal. So the question might be, is it a good thing that Joel's death isn't fulfilling? As I said, it can be, it all depends on how you interpret it. I'm sorry people don't like this answer, but it's true. I think the game wanted us to feel the same way as Ellie, but some people don't want to feel like Ellie. If you see all the things Ellie goes through, then yeah, a lot of people wouldn't want to go through that. It's an angle the game took that I truly feel is unique, but might not always be enjoyed. But that brings up another question. Is the game supposed to be enjoyed? Are games, uh, it's gonna sound kind of pretentious, but stick with me. Are games supposed to be enjoyed or are they supposed to affect us and really connect with us on a deeper level? The game is about hate. Neil Druckmann says this. So is it possible for it to be enjoyable in the traditional sense of, oh, that was fun. I enjoyed that, that was a good experience. I'm not sure. Maybe it was, or maybe it was made to impact people. Something I think it definitely accomplished. Maybe in a bad way, maybe in a good way. What's important though, is that no matter how you interpret the game, it's valid and it's your opinion. Opinions are gonna vary, sure, but the only one that matters is yours. So many times movies and games and TV shows come out that the creator thinks is awesome. The creator wouldn't release this if they didn't think it was good, but then the public just hates it. That's just how it goes. The Last of Us 2 is a very unique game in its reception, and I think it's always going to be remembered. Remembered by some as good, and others by bad, but remembered nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked this video and you stuck through it, then please consider subscribing. I would love it a lot. If you want to converse about The Last of Us 2 in the comments, I would love nothing more, so please comment below. I want to just talk about it, good or bad. I I'm down for whatever. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.